now going to have a look at the mix of It's On. Uh, I'm going to get a DIY mix together, something that you could play out. And um, I'm going to start, as ever, with the drums. Now, this is a very busy mix. So essentially what I'm going to have to do is start with the main beat and then bring everything in and around it. So with that in mind, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring down the levels on uh, pretty much everything and then bring them up and in. So I'm going to start with the break here at 0 dB and I'm going to do this just on the drums for now. So I'm going to take everything out. And I've got these all bussed up. So we've got the limiter on there. So I'm just going to solo up the drum bus. And we're going to start here with the uh, it's, it's on break. Now it's very saturated with distortion. Now, what I'm wondering there is, I kind of like the effect. But it may be a little bit too much. So what am I going to try? Let's try an overdrive instead. Now, that's actually much brighter. Let's bring the level down there again. Yeah, it's it's... Controlling the low end there a bit more. It's not quite as aggressive. So that's a good place to start for me. Now I'm going to bring in the 909 ride. Just to sit underneath. There's a lot of top end action going on in this track. Let's bring in the shaker next. I'm going to pan this off a little bit as well. Make use of the stereo width. And just to check to make sure that there's no errant low end frequencies flying around. EQ that. So we've got this second ride. I'm going to pan these over opposite sides. Now let's bring the crashes in. And I've got a second crash here, which comes in halfway through the phrase, as it were. And I want that level to be just a little bit lower. So you can just almost hear it. Okay, with this balance in place, it's going to start bringing in the brake effects and get a balance on those. I mean, that can be quite loud. It's going to have quite an impact when it comes in. Just going to take some of that real low out of that. Okay, just going to move through. Check out some of these other pulp break effects. And then we have a reverse that comes in at the end here. Okay, and I just need to make sure the two aren't overplaying each other here. So I'm going to roll this back. Okay, so I'm going to keep the, keep the beat dry. There's a lot going on in here. I think of adding any kind of reverb, it's just going to muddy things up. Now let's move on to the basses. So 
I'm going to make sure that they're all grouped together. Make sure we've got a spare bus there, bus three. And let's just start with the sub line. So let's just turn the bass, just solo this up for a minute. And let's just bring in the sub bass. Okay, so you can see there's a massive peak as it goes through there. So I've got this ad limiter at the front here. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bring that in there. Now that's coming over, so I can bring the input scale down. Try and get a consistency in this. still see that we've got quite the peak going on here. Let's just see what the compressor's doing. So I just want that to sit underneath providing that rumble. I'm just going to try this instead with a limiter when it's saturating too much. So it can add a bit of colour from the, yeah, it's adding a bit too much colour that I want it to be slightly purer. Okay, so that's got quite quite the grip on that. Can bring up a little more level on it. You can see there's very little movement. We've got kind of more of a consistency going here. Let's try it with the hardening for a minute. Okay, I'm going to try with that hard knee. Essentially, nothing's getting above that output level, as you can see. We've got that kind of nice rumble down the bottom there. Okay, so let's bring in the next one, which is the roll bass. That's, that's cool. Maybe a little bit dry, this one. So what I don't want is a uh, very, very, very short reverb. I don't want, don't want it. Let's try something like that. I don't want it to, be, don't want it to be too much of a foghorn. Just a little touch of that. Okay, now I'm going to bring the rest in. Okay, way too loud. So I'm going to bring that down. And again, try and balance this up. Once you've got a rough balance with the bases, we're going to bring the beats back in again. Okay, so let's move forward. Now, this second lead here, essentially, it's the same sound, but with a different LFO setting on it. So I should just be able to match up the settings. Which I think is what that's doing. Okay, and then there's the fill here, which is more of an effect. And then, oh, we can see we've got a big bit of peaking going on here, quite loud. So, let's turn this down a little bit. And I think this time I will use an adaptive limiter. You can see how that stopping it dead there, which is good. Okay, now overall, I'm going to add a little bit of mastering to this. So, I'm going to use a very gentle compressor. Just back that release off a bit. Just sit like that. 
and then I'm going to use the linear phase EQ. Now I'm going to bring this in at this point. Bring the beats in now, and just to see how these two are sitting together. Okay, and then I'm going to limit. Just to make sure, I'm going to hard knee under the look ahead up. You can hear that the roar bass is a little on the loud side. Okay, yeah, that's sounding pretty good. a little bit out around this point here just to unmuddy things and we can also affect severe roll off at about 30 hertz there and I'm also tempted to do that with the bases here I think we've got we've got good, got a good balance going on here. So next we're bringing the lead sounds. And I'm going to group these two together. I think overall it's just a case of bringing the level down on these. Try the second lead. Oh, that's too loud. And just a bit of bus compression on these as well. up a little bit more like that. I was just constantly listening and making adjustments as we go. Okay, so I'm happy with that now. So let's just get and go back to the introduction of this and bring in the pads. At Point Blank Online, you've got two methods of interaction with your tutor. Firstly, you've got the weekly online masterclass, which is in real time. And then also we've got feedback on your assignments, and that's known as DVR. So the online masterclass is a one hour session you get with your tutor every week. You can ask questions about lesson content and get instant feedback and also demonstrations on the fly from their computer desktop with our streaming technology. DVR stands for Direct Video Response, and the concept is really simple. You upload your Ableton Logic or Cubase project file to your tutor, he downloads it, and then pushes record on the screen capturing software, and it evaluates your work, so basically giving you one-to-one -one feedback. You see all of the mouse movements and any parameter changes made by your tutor. It's kind of like sitting in the studio over their shoulder watching what they're doing whilst they work. We have found the DVR process has truly revolutionized the way that we teach it online and the results speak for themselves. Book your place on the course now by visiting pointblankonline.net.